Well, lots of people have messaged me wanting to know more about fixing small two-stroke engines and cleaning their carburetors and fixing weed eaters and stuff like that. So I don't have a very common problem to do right now, but it's a, a weird problem. An old man dumped two-stroke into the gas tank. I mean, two-stroke oil, unmixed. Got her running for a couple seconds and then filled the carb and the system up with two-stroke oil. So just like the carb was clogged with dirt like it was sitting a few years, I'm going to have to take the carburetor apart and get all the two-stroke oil out and show you how I fix two-stroke carburetors. This home light's a typical example of any weed eater. The good thing about it is the carburetor is exposed so I can show you things more easily. Most weed eater carburetors have two screws. Those are called mixture screws. One is called an H and one is called an L. L means low speed adjustment, H means high speed adjustment. So they set your mixtures for the two different speed ranges. This particular model, being a later model, has the little plastic covers on the screws that prevent very much movement of them. This is for emissions. They actually made emission laws for small engines and especially two strokes. I hate these things. When the carburetors get old and a tiny bit clogged, you can't turn the screws enough to get the right mixture and you kind of wonder what to do next. What I do, I just take my side cutters and I gently bite off these little covers and chunks without bending the screws and throw the pieces away and then just use the screws the way they were meant to be used, you know, like on the old weed eaters. When your weed eater is adjusting, when your weed eater is running all by itself, well, the way you adjust it, the very first adjustment you do is run it wide open throttle, no choke, and then you turn the H screw in or out till it runs the fastest speed and then as soon as it starts running the fastest speed you turn it out a little bit more maybe an eighth of a turn it'll actually slow it down a little bit but it will give it more torque causing it to run slightly richer so there's less chance of it stalling when you hit the grass the way you adjust your L screw for low speed mixture is you set your idle speed so that it idles kind of okay and kind of slow it may not be idling smooth yet and then while it's idling all by itself, you turn the L screw whichever direction you need to to make it run the fastest. Once it's running the fastest, well then you readjust your idle speed screw up here on the throttle plate to make it run the idle speed you want it to idle. And that's how you set both of them. When they're properly set, you should be able to rev it without a bog in between when it's warmed up. It'll just go from low speed to high speed uh, without, you know, slowing down or changing RPMs, just increasing. Now in any two-stroke engine, and even a four-stroke engine, when you're revving them out wide open throttle, and you see like misty gas blowing back towards you, and you have less of a sucking sound, you more, more have a throaty sound, like whoa. That means your exhaust system is plugged. Well, that's not as common on four-strokes, but it does happen from pinched exhaust or clogged catalytic converters. But on two-strokes, that happens all the time. Over the life of time, you own your weed eater, the exhaust will become clogged if you use it a lot. Sometimes there's what's called a spark arrestor screen in the output. Sometimes you can't see it right near the opening, but it's in there. And you've got to split your exhaust in half and either scratch out all the little holes in that screen, remove the screen, or use a torch and burn off the carbon that's built up on that screen. Here's an old Lawn Boy engine to demonstrate clogged exhaust ports. This is where it attaches to the muffler, and this is the exhaust port. You can see the piston moving up and down like you can in all two strokes. This particular engine has three ports. All of them could be clogged, or usually the two outside ones clogged first and the middle one last. You just use a screwdriver to dig out all the carbon and crud, and then blow it out. You uh, do your best, try not to scratch the piston while you're doing this. On uh, little tiny weed eaters, they usually don't have three holes. It's just sort of one oval port that's a lot smaller same thing the port just gets smaller and smaller so you scrape it out blow it out restart it and everything will probably be fine another thing you can notice when your ports are clogged is that your engine will start up and run when it's cold not have full power or rev out then as soon as it warms up it even works worse well there's a good sign too to take a look at you know under your exhaust system and ch check your ports it is so common on your little weed eater engines to have rotten fuel lines you know, the little uh, filter bulb inside will fall off and bounce around inside the tank. Your lines can break on the outside of the tank. 
the stuff just gets rotten after about five years so there is a special fuel line in different diameters you can buy but there's a trick of how to get the fuel line into the hole of the tank without it just getting stuck the trick is to cut a long sharp angle see like that you might even want to make a better point do a double cut see now I have a long skinny point well you put a little spit on here and you start shoving it in the hole and twisting at the same time and it actually goes in if you get lucky enough you might be able to get it in far enough you can reach through the filler neck opening and pull it through so there's the trick simple as that bet you didn't hear that one before now because weed eaters aren't really worth that much money and there's not much profits in fixing them the very first thing you do before you even attempt to fix one to see if it's worthwhile going to step two you see if the motor's good. So first, pull the handle, see if it's got good compression. Then, check for spark. If that's good, next step. What I do is I dump a, about a half a teaspoon of two-stroke oil in the carburetor while squeezing the throttle wide open. Make sure the carburetor is facing upwards. Then, without the choke on and the machine turned on, I have the throttle squeezed wide open and I pull it till it starts and dies. If your motor's good and you've got good crankshaft seals and good compression, it will start up and die, rev full open for a second and then conk out. Then proceed to step B, cleaning the carburetor or checking for clogged exhaust or broken fuel lines. Now for removal of the carburetor, so I can take it apart and give it the general cleaning you would give to any weed eater that sat for a couple years it's clogged up. One thing I forgot to mention, there is a special carburetor on very late model, often more expensive weed eaters, called an emissions carburetor. These carburetors look different, they have no adjustment screws, and the way they have a cylinder that lifts up in the middle instead of a throttle plate makes them even look like a motorcycle carburetor. I hate these carburetors. They're set to run so lean. If they're not working perfect, you can't fix them. There's no adjustment, and they're so expensive to buy new ones. Luckily, most of them don't have those. So, pull your little carby off. <clears throat> Just unhook the throttle cable. And if you need to unhook the fuel lines, it's 100% important which one goes where. So make a diagram or do something to remember that. Now that you got your little carb off, check the squeezy bulb for the primer. It shouldn't, it shouldn't have any cracks. It should be perfect. If it's leaking, your machine won't work. Check the back gasket. There usually isn't any reeds, so there's nothing to worry about in there. Oh, there's my choke. So visually this one's fine. This is called an all-position carburetor, and it uses a diaphragm and needle and pin instead of a float bowl. So, I guess we could start there first, although it's not that important. Now, do your best to peel off a diaphragm and look inside. This one's coming off no problem. And you can see some pure two-stroke oil laying in there. Well now, I'm going to get this all the way off. And I want to blow it out. I depress that little lever arm right in the middle. When I depress that, it lifts open the needle which is right there, just like the needle in a lawnmower carburetor, so that when I blow air through both ways, through here and through those fuel tubes, it'll clear the passageways out. Well, that's good enough for now. On extremely clogged old carburetors, you even take each one of these screws out and blow through the little holes and through the passageways through the throat of the carburetor. Clear them out. Make sure you get the screws marked which one goes where because each one's slightly different. Since this carburetor just had too much two-stroke oil in it, I'll leave those screws intact. Well, now I'm taking apart the prim primer bulb side. That's the float chamber side. 
in that in that area is where the fuel fuel is metered into the carburetor on the Venturi and this is the pumping side there's actually a little diaphragm fuel pump in there to get the gas up from below the carburetor to the carburetor this is your priming pump that gets it there in the first place then below there is your diaphragm pumps which take vacuum or pressure to this little hole here move the diaphragm up and down and act like a fuel pump like in a snowmobile the two little valves just look like two little tongues of black paper and sometimes they get fibers or hairs on them and that causes them not to seal or sometimes they're just stuck there with gooey stale dried up two-stroke oil it's unfortunate that when you're fixing weed eaters you know, 50 percent of all the ones you come across will have a carburetor that's so gummed up it's unrepairable and these carburetors are so much money to buy new from a dealer but you can get them as low as seven bucks on ebay and maybe do some modifications to make them work for your weed eater if you can make it fit on your weed eater, weed eater and make the throttle work it'll probably work on your weed eater if you adjust it properly now, now that i've got the fuel pump site apart that's a little filter screen sometimes it's clogged right now you can see the two stroke oil sitting on it that's a vacuum chamber and these other holes are holes that the fuel is pumped through like I said, there's your vacuum diaphragm that moves up and down as a pump, which gets its vacuum from over there. These are clear valves, but they're a tongue shape. There's one there, and there's another one there. They go move up and down, open and closed, against two of those little holes. To make sure everything is 100% clean, and down there too. So now we blow everything, but we're carefully going to have to hold our fingers on the edge so we don't blow diaphragm away while we're blowing it. In here you can blow it all you want, nothing's going to disappear. See, almost disappeared. Oops, see, almost lost my filter screen, it just about popped out. That doesn't happen very often. Now that this uh, clear gasket's back in place, or diaphragm, time for reassembly. Now to put the diaphragm back on for the other side of the carburetor, where the needle valve is. This acts like a fuel bowl on a carburetor. When it gets full enough, that little button moves away from the needle and stops the fuel. This should have no holes and it should be soft. Sometimes they get very hard on old machines and when they're very hard they don't move then your machine pisses gas out all the time or floods out when you're trying to use it and well then you gotta change it all done now I'm going to assume this carburetor was probably okay because it was just too much two-stroke in it but at least you know now how to go through the general procedure to clean a carb in case it's all clogged up if you've lost count of how many turns you've got these screws out well, the general rule of thumb is any engine will run with the screws two turned two turns out to two and a half turns out. Once you get it running, then you do your final adjustments from then. Very often it ends up around one and a half turns out for each screw, but that's not always true. Now, when you get everything reassembled and you want to get your carburetor primed, you have two choices. You can dump a little bit of gas in there, like I said, a half a teaspoon, and keep starting and having it run till it dies. And that will use its own fuel pump to prime itself. Or you can sit here and, depending on how well that thing works, pump it as many times as you want to you see fuel inside of here and fuel going back down the return line. There's no limit to how many times you can pump it. This does not prime the carburetor like on a lawnmower. It squirts no fuel in. All it does is suck liquid fuel up to fill the carburetor, and that's it. So, here goes a speck of gas that I'm just storing in a pot bottle, two-stroke. That's enough. Squeeze the throttle to make sure it goes into the engine, and now it's ready to start.
that one I already had pre-primed the primer button on top so that's why it kept running after I did that but if it doesn't keep running the first time keep adding some more till it does keep running air cleaner is back on now we're all done now the only other problems you'll encounter with these weed eaters is of course screwed up recoil starts but that's another story blown out gaskets at the back here where the crankcase mount plate is or blown out engine crankshaft seals in behind the flywheel when those are blown out your engine absolutely will not start even if it has lots of compression sometimes it'll just fire and pop and confuse you and make you more frustrated